This clip has been circulating. This is Giannis Varoufakis. Am I saying that correctly? Yeah, he is. Uh, was the the former? He was a formerly high up in the Greek government. I believe it was finance minister when uh, Greece was going through all of its uh, EU debt stuff um, about a decade or so ago. A bit, I think we call him a serial political entrepreneur and launched a lot of different organizations. But like, um, and not all super successful. But uh, I think it really. Um, I think I, I really like Giannis Varoufakis. Um, I think as like a like he was formative for me when I was coming into you know my political understandings like you know ten years or so ago. Um, and here he's talking to a I believe a British uh, libertarian outfit called Unheard, and they're talking about the borders here. And he 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 puts this pretty uh, extreme. But I think after this, we can talk about like what the uh, practical uh, ramifications of this conversation are about um, borders and how like borders are actually a failure and hardening borders are, represent yeah. a failure of humanity. 2,500 migrants have died or gone missing this year when trying to cross the Mediterranean to get to Europe. The UN data released earlier this week. Yep. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, that's a two thirds increase from last year's total of 1,680 people in the same period. Um, so there is an in influx and then there's also... Uh, and it, an increase in deadliness partially because governments uh, like George Maloney's government in Italy are leather it's basically stated policy that uh, to let them die in the water and drown to death yeah and what's interesting to me about this is like this guy um, Freddie or whatever the unheard guy first of all I think the unheard branding is a little bit weird referring to people as a herd um, and hmm. right like challenging the herd with new and bold thinking but are they really challenging the herd when look at the way that um, Giannis challenges him? Like, what are your principles here? Do you believe in freedom of movement and like, say, free markets? Like, because we're liberals, right? A opposed, supposedly. And he hides behind a supposed bigotry in the population here instead of challenging it. Like, I thought the unheard maybe mission was. And I think this is a general like the people that are backed into the corner of like, oh, I guess I have to support hard borders because it's practical. I think Giannis does a good job of like kind of showing how thin that stance is. Are we liberals or are we not? Do we well, want? Do you really you, want borders? You tell me. I mean, once upon a time, there were no passports. The world was much a much better place. When when Lord Byron went to Greece, where well, he died, or Lord Elgin for that matter, mm -hmm. he didn't need a passport. What was wrong with that? I think borders are a sign of failure of the human species. It's very relevant right now because the UK is currently having a, a, a lot of debate about immigration. You shouldn't be having this debate. It is a misanthropic, stupid debate. <laughs> and you have a minister who should have been expelled from this country for having these ideas. She, I mean, she even challenged the U United Nations Charter on Refugees. I mean, this is, this is, this is... A, she suggested it might have been an outdated, idiot. An outdated <laughs> uh, legal mechanism to she resolve that problem. a dangerous problem. and dangerous, poor excuse of human nature. But That's the people, well, who's, man of yours. the people who are very anxious... Very ashamed of her. But the people who are anxious about this issue are, are the people you are trying to look after. Sure. They are people who... My job is not, I mean, it's not to pander to anxieties that um, are absolutely false consciousness examples. Look, Freddie, we Europeans exported hordes, hordes of people. We emigrated Herds. to the four cor corners of the universe, of the universe, of the planet. Huh? We populated the earth from Latin America to North America, to Asia, to Africa, millions usually armed as well, right? <laughs> as imperialists. Mm -hmm. uh, we had no qualms about that for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. All that has happened is that we're getting old. Demographically, we are aging. So, you know, migratory flows have reversed. We need migrants. The more the merrier. Why do people worry about the Romanians living next door to them? It's because the flats have been privatized. They used to be council houses and now they are being privatized and austerity together with largesse for the finances through quantitative easing has destroyed the foundation of the society even if you didn't have a single foreigner. All this angst and, uh, and, and rage is being diverted as in the mid-war period against the Jew, the Muslim, the Romanian, the Brit, the German, the foreigner. We must not tolerate that and we must never pander to that and say, oh, the solution is to erect taller fences. No, it is not. Those people who you don't want to tolerate prefer... I mean, the politicians. I would, I'm talking about voters no, who, no, no, who no, might no. have, I, who might I, have I ideas. I tolerate every like. voter and okay. I respect every voter. Okay. But, but I engage in conversation with them, whereas Ms. Braverman is 
trying to poison the soul of everyone for her own very narrow interests of political survival of a government that is nasty, evil, and its life should be as, as short as possible. I mean, that is, and I love the way he responds to, frankly, cowardly retreat by that guy of, well, what about, you want to speak for these people, the herd, as we call them mm-hmm. over here at Unheard. No, man. Like, and the, the idea, like, I don't know what's going on in the, in the uh, European Union. The fact is that, um, uh, anti-immigration sentiment often fluctuates around 50%, higher, lower 10% in the United States, but pro-immigration sentiment is on the rise in the United States. So like, who are we really speaking for here? Who is being ventriloquized into the voice of libertarians saying, oh, I'm a libertarian. I support all of this libertarian stuff, small government, free markets, man. But the border, let's militarize the shit out of that thing because it's fucking ridiculous. The, the, my entire life, we have this entire NAFTA shit where it's like, oh, we're going to liberalize trade across this border. And mm. the entire time we're doing that, it's militarizing that border so people can't go across it. So we're going to talk about how money um, can go across borders for investors, but not people. And that's entirely class war. And we need people. And look, there is a, I'll stop here because I'm going to go down a little bit, but there's a difference between just immediately going to open borders and what's actually practical and what's practical we saw this in the eu freedom of movement when i was in the european U- union uh 10 years ago i could go from the uk to france to belgium all these places without showing a passport that's the world we should be moving toward is these sort of like liberalized and look maybe you have certain um infrastructure that you administrative state that you pay for to, to keep track of people or whatever in the meantime but we should be moving to far more um re- refugee resettlement and the problem is as, as uh verfaka says is like like these things, this, this racism here to just act like, oh, no, it's the people speaking as opposed to this is how the politicians like Suella Braverman are perverting actual like problems with survival in this country among constituencies into racism. That's the problem. And it's the rentiers and it's people that make it hard to live in Europe. Yeah. And <clears throat> I mean, it, it benefits the rentiers, the people uh, who are commodifying housing and, 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 and making money off of it to pit people against uh, one another and not uh, allow for the, diver- the, the, the direction of pressure upwards. And so if you create this like artificial insecurity with something like housing, then you're able to talk about migration and those things as zero sum games and resources that are finite. Um, but but, but and, and and have the people just fight to the death over them as opposed to having more uh, uh, just kind of migration um, in ways that that are a little bit more borderless. That doesn't mean that everybody needs to, gets to be an immediate citizen. But, you know, in the United States, <clears throat> It's a much more it's a much newer phenomenon to have this kind of militants at the border. Uh, it coincides a lot with the drug war yes. that we created. 100 percent. And the and the um, and also I would say the the chaos that our like CIA created by overthrowing governments yep. to, to, to serve our own interests. And so now we've militarized the border. We don't allow people to come to this country in a way that makes sense um, and, and, and that allows them to have some sort of path to citizenship and amnesty and the ability to work here and then maybe go back to their family as things were decades exactly. ago with like, Mexico. That's the th- that for the majority of this country is that was a and it still is a permeable barrier despite it being militarized. So we're basically just wasting money on doing something that has never been done. That has never been an impermeable barrier. Never. And the, the, the desire to make it one is ludicrous. It's, it's absurd. Like it, the, and the idea that it's for like labor protection, it please, please like they're like, um, uh, you want to do that. Then you work with, uh, unions across the border. Like the UAW does for instance, like that. The reason that like a hard border is basically a government program for bosses to ship about uppity uh, immigrant employees say oh you don't like it here or as uh, a leverage point to, sh- to pay them less you're exactly under the table this. it's all coercion like uh, take what you can get and also we'll take your eight-year-old here to clean out the slaughterhouse uh, at you know 10 30 p.m and like that's what hard borders do it doesn't like, we if you want to deal with um uh, sort of uh, getting around labor protections for american workers then you put the ceos in fucking jail when they make these labor violations especially when it comes to child 
labor. But instead, we have legislatures out there making it easier for Tyson or whoever to use child labor. And it's disgusting. And all of these libertarians, and that's why I'm so upset with this like unheard, challenging the herd. How are you challenging the herd? And, you know, you're, 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 uh, you're, you're defining the herd as fundamentally bigoted is what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And I, I fucking, I'm not here for it. I'm, I'm so uh, sick of like all these people um, from that, that don't actually have any like, I don't know what this guy's relationship, but I imagine um, often don't have connections to the people that they're supposedly putting bigotry in the mouth of, whether it's like anti-trans or anti-immigrant sentiment. Like, no, own it yourself. Own it yourself if you're yeah. going to, you know, put, elaborate it. Don't say, well, but people think. Mm-hmm. People think a lot of things. But individuals themselves think a lot of contradictory things. The people themselves are extremely varied. So let's talk about what you believe in. Also, they never take responsibility, these sort of outlets and organizations. They never take responsibility for uh, putting the seed of those ideas in the minds of the people they apparently are exactly. just listening to. Like, uh, I don't know of unheard all that well, but based on just that interview, I'm assuming uh, they uh, they have spread uh, anti-immigrant sentiment in their other articles or videos or whatever. And then the viewers come across it. They see this, they, uh, you know, take it in and then they just repeat what they hear from Unheard and then Unheard comes out and goes, oh, this is what the people think. No, you told them this. Yeah, they came to you. They came to you for information and you put this seed in their mind. And now you're acting like they came up with this or this is their beliefs. Yeah, yeah, it's the exact same thing as when Republicans are like, well, there's a concern out, out there about if our elections are safe. It's like, yeah, motherfuckers, you've been saying that uh, Trump can't lose unless it's stolen for uh, two years. Yeah. 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 And and just to also return to something that Giannis said there, too, is um, like the the entire history of colonialism, especially as it relates to migration in Europe, needs to be discussed more within the context of migration to Europe. Um, yeah. Like, oh, it's totally fine to export uh, white Europeans with guns and and, and with, uh, uh, you know, big financial backers in order to extract resources. It's totally fine to extract dividends from companies that are, you know, pulling uh, your, like these heavy metals out of Africa. Yeah, right. <laughs> but and, them coming here, nah. No. And, and in the same way, that the legacy of the drug, the, the more recent legacy of the drug war and our over, overturning of democratically elected governments in Latin America is inherent to the conversation around immigration in this country. The same can be said 100% for the long history of colonialism in Europe um, and, and their resource extraction, which, which left many countries and areas of the world devastated where just trillions and trillions of dollars of wealth comes back to the uk to italy to uh, to 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 spain to wherever uh to france um and then the people are immiserated and and the infrastructure in those countries and the governments are not necessarily stable often based on intervention from the aforementioned countries as well and then people decide it's time to find a better life for themselves let me go where the wealth is let me go where the wealth that was taken from my country is and i want to find a a home there and then someone like georgia maloney People, I mean, and again, he apologized for saying that that uh, that uh, Suella Braverman Suella, should be ex- she's should like, be she expelled. Should, yeah. But but people like Suella Braverman say, no, we're closing the doors. We stole from you. Um, yeah, you know, actually, can I just say on that point, like he's apologizing. I I got a little bit ahead of myself. We should just ridicule this person. But what he's saying about she should be kicked out. She is saying on mass about all sorts of very unfortunate people who have done nothing wrong as she has, right? Yeah. So like th- this idea that like, oh, this v- sort of type of violence, which it is, to expel somebody from a country is a heinous act of violence. And Giannis was right to, you know, you know pull back on it. But she's doing that. That's what she's doing. So like, yeah. you know, he's, he's, he's a little bit, um, you know, maybe even overly sensitive about that. Well, you know, he's but just... But it's nice. He's, in the, he's, a, he's a good guy. So that's why. Exactly. Yeah. Unlike the people she wants to expel, uh, you know, uh, she probably has somewhere to go if the UK was to kick her out. 